Hey everybody, I'm jumping in. If you'd like to um, join me in this Bible study, grab your Bible. And I am in Genesis 41. So if you want to join me, Genesis 41. And let's just jump down to, okay, um, around verse 33. So just to give you a background, Joseph is being asked to interpret the Pharaoh's dreams. And here we are. So, um, now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up one fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. So in short, um, Joseph is sharing what the dream really means. And he's saying, Pharaoh, you need to take one fifth of the um, bounty of the food that you have in the seven years of plenty and you need to set it aside for the seven years that are going to follow a famine and um and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of egypt and the land perish not through the famine and the advice was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. So Pharaoh listens to what Joseph is saying about his dreams and how he's interpreting them. And Pharaoh's going, yeah. Um, and Pharaoh says to his servants, can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of God is? Verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed you all this, there is no, there's none so discreet and wise as you are. So Joseph was being seen by Pharaoh to show his wisdom and discernment in this moment. And so Pharaoh says, thou shall be over my house. And according to thy word, shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than you. So because Joseph was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream in, in a godly fashion that Pharaoh said that this makes sense. Then Joseph was then appointed as the next commander in line over Egypt besides Pharaoh himself. So he was given tremendous power to execute and to then make that happen. So then Joseph was then saying, this is what's going to happen. You're going to save this amount of food for this upcoming famine. And then because that was saved, Joseph, we know the end of the story is Joseph not only was able to save the people um, of Egypt, but he was also able to save his own family when they came for rations of food, because Joseph was in that position of power, God put him there. So in this portion about wisdom and discernment and this topic of famine and feast, feast and famine, okay, it is wise counsel, wise advice for us to look at this situation ourselves and to think on we already had a time of COVID where, you know, we were contained in our homes, we couldn't go out, we had all these restrictions. And the point is, if a time such as that were to repeat itself, such as, as in the story of Joseph and the famine, and then, you know, the feast of seven years, and then the famine of seven years, the point is, we should be prepared, we should be prepared with our food storage, with our water storage, with having things available and not just thinking about what we're eating today, but how we can conserve and save for future and um, to just, you know, have the resources on hand to prepare for the times of feast and for the times of famine. So there it is. Have a good one, everybody. I hope this makes some that you can apply this into your everyday life by practicing and, and preparing yourself for future plenty and future famine.